Okay, you're probably wondering a little bit about the title of this one. Three sets of ten. Well, if you've been in a strength training game for any length of time, or if you read any magazines or newspapers, journals, whatever to deal with a strength exercise, you will see that probably the most common recommendation, especially for beginners, is to start off with three sets of ten. I mean, it's so common you hear it all over the place. Now, where did it come from? What makes this this regime so effective? Three sets of ten. Why not do two sets of eight? Why not do four sets of twelve? Why not do five sets of five? All of these are nice combination numbers. And they all don't mean a thing. Now, you may be wondering, hey, this guy's flipped his lid. Why does everybody say this? And I'm saying something different here. Well, because there's no research to back up that this is the best way to start. In fact, the research shows just the opposite. Instead of starting with three sets of 10, you only need one set of 10 to 15. That'll give you the same results as doing three sets of 10. You're gonna get just as strong. The changes in the muscle and whatnot are gonna be the same. So why do three sets of 10? Look how much time it takes. Now you figure, how many exercises does a beginner need? I wouldn't yet, I need a, if I wanna develop, I'm just getting started, I wanna develop my total body, which I hope is your objective. But is this what you wanna do when you start? You just don't wanna get bigger biceps and think you're gonna be a better athlete. Or I'm gonna do, I'm, man, I'm gonna really develop my quads, I'm gonna be a great runner. Well, it might help you a little bit, may not. But usually it won't because the quads don't push you forward. Quads are only used to hold you up, to keep you vertical. But the quads are not used in running, in terms of forward propulsion. All right, so we want to strengthen the whole body. So let's just do a little bit of arithmetic. I'll count on my fingers to keep tabs here. <clears throat> we need something for the ankles, let's say ankle extension. We should not do other exercises too, if you run or other athlete, you know, the adduction, abduction, and so on, but we'll leave that to be. One for the ankle, then for the knee. Well, we gotta get the quads, so sometimes we'll do leg extension, then we need some leg curls. Uh, we need a squat because that's gonna get both the knee as well as some of the hip joint, hip joint extension. See, now we're up to four already. Uh, then we need other exercises for the size of the hip. Hips are very, very important because your hips really determine uh, or the basis for execution of many skills. It's your hips where your power is located. By moving your hips, you're now moving your body and you're gonna get strength into it. Like you hear batting coaches or pitchers say, get your hips into it, get your hips into it. Power lifters doing a deadlift, get your hips and hip to it. <laughs> Excuse me, get your hips into it. So. We need more exercises for the hips. I think I'm gonna lose track here. <clears throat> and then we need some hip abduction. We need some hip abduction. We need the hip flexors. Now we're up to about eight. Now let's get to the abdominals. <clears throat> okay, we can do uh, crunches, which to me is a waste of time. But if you like to do them, fine. And I'll explain why it's a waste of time. Because you don't do this in any sport. So if you're into fitness and you wanna do crunches, that's great. And if you do enough crunches, You'll develop a nice rounded back and constrict your uh, rib cage, interfere with your breathing, and you're not going to get any improvement in your sport. Uh, but this is why many people do, so I'm not going to argue, don't do it. <coughs> what was up to eight? So, what should I do for the dollars that I'm not going to do crunches? Well, how about reverse? I call them reverse sit ups. You get mainly the lower abs. Lower abs play a major role in running cooking and other skills. See, so now we're up to about nine. Now you take a look at most of your sports involved in rotation, you gotta rotate. So that means the abdominal oblique muscles. See, now we're going past 10. <clears throat> gotta start again, same hand. As you get your obliques, how many exercises can we do? Now you don't wanna do a crunch with a twist. That's hardly any range of motion. You have to do something like the reverse trunk twist. That'll give you a full 90 degrees of rotation. So now we got the abs taken care of that way. And see, these are only beginning exercises. Later on, they're even more. 
Now, sometimes you also rotate, especially if you're going backwards in your preparatory moves and so on. The rotation is then caused by your lower back muscles, not the abs. So now we're up to about 11. So then you have to do something like a back raise with a twist. And a back raise is another great exercise to strengthen the lower back. So now we've kind of finished the, we're up to 12 already. And all we did was do the legs and a midsection. Now let's get into the upper body. Well, for the chest, we got the bench press, a little bit on the shoulders. What is this now, 13? <clears throat> then, uh, uh, let's say lateral arm raises, front arm raises, up to about 15. Overhead press, now we get into 16. Biceps, biceps curls or triceps push down, 17, 18. If you want to get more of the wrist flexors, if you're any kind of an athlete, baseball player, uh, football player, basketball player, you got to have that good wrist action. So we can do wrist curls, and reverse curls, supination, pronation, these actions. There are even other exercises that are more specialized. Then it should be exercises for the fingers, strengthen those fingers. They're involved in all of our sports. So I'm sorry, but I lost track already. <laughs> you go back and count them. But look, we're up around 20 already. We're over 20. That's the point I wanted to make. Not so much which exercises. 20 exercises. Three sets of 10. How long is that going to take you? You don't have three hours to spend in the gym. And you're not going to get the results. That's the key. So by doing one set of anywhere from 10 to 15, you're going to get great results. This is great base. This is the base training. See, once you do the, the one set of you know, uh, 10 to 15, then in the next phase, this is how you can periodize your training. Next phase, now you can go into more strength. You can drop it down. You can do a set. And we're getting into sets now. You can do a set for strength and a set for more muscular endurance where you're still doing 15 to 20. Or at the beginning, you can start off instead of doing 10 to 15, do 15 to 20. As you do this, you're developing more muscular endurance, which is a better base for the muscle rather than pure strength. If you have the muscular endurance first, you'll be able to develop more muscular strength at a later time. So, <clears throat> these are some of the things that you can be doing to make your training most effective. But to start off with three sets of 10 right from the beginning, there's no need for it. It's gonna stress your body tremendously. You're not gonna get the gains. And it's not gonna help you down the road. And in fact, it may even make you more prone to injury. And when you start off this way, if you did enough exercise at the beginning, three sets of 10, means that's the most you can do, then you're gonna be so sore the next day you can hardly walk. So what does that do? It turns you off mentally. Man, if I can't walk for about a week until I loosen up enough to be, before I can do anything, I don't wanna do that kind of training. I don't blame you. I wouldn't wanna do it either. So. These are some of the key elements you want to start off with. We're, we're going to take a look at other types of strength training, but let's get away from the notion that you have to do three sets of 10, or three sets of this, or three sets of that. At the beginning, one set. 10 to 15 or 15 to 20. That's going to give you great gains. And if you need more information in this area, see the book, Biomechanics and Kinesiology of Exercise. It has great information in it that'll help you tremendously learn all the muscles, what they do, what sports they're good for, how it should be done, and so on.